The movie begins in the hustling, bustling streets of Hyderabad, India. A car stops in front of an old-looking building, and several people pour out from it. Turns out that these people are here to look for a suitable bride for their son. Abdul Qadir, a man of dignity and hospitality, gracefully descends the steps to welcome his esteemed guests. He ushers them into his house, where they have the honor of meeting the main character of our story, Golra's Qadir, affectionately known as Golu. After they all settle down, she offers them drinks and they start discussing wedding matters. Abdul asks his daughter to take the boy, Mani, to the roof for some time alone. The guests subtly ask Abdul about the dowry that accompanies this union. However, as the details of the dowry are revealed, disappointment creeps across their faces, and a collective murmur of dissatisfaction hangs heavy in the air. In a desperate attempt to finalize the proposal, he starts telling them about Gulu's achievements, about her desire to go to America, and that he will manage to increase the dowry. Thinking about it, they all finally agree upon the proposal. But fate has something else in store, as Mani descends from the roof shouting that he doesn't want to be married in this family. Perturbed and perplexed, the guests press for an explanation. Turns out that the biodata he provided was based upon lies, and when Gulu asked about it, he got hyper. The guests leave, furious, Abdul, crushed by the turn of events, trails after them, a torrent of apologies flowing from his lips like a desperate plea for redemption. Yet their ears are deaf to his entreaties, so disappointed and sad, Abdul goes to his room. As the sun rises over the city of Hyderabad, Abdul Qadir wakes up and makes tea for himself and Gulu. He then takes it to her room and wakes her up, but when she greets him, he doesn't respond, still angry about last night's incident. He then packs lunch, gets ready, and they both leave for the day. On their way to work, she tries making small talk with him, but he keeps a straight face. In a moment of vulnerability, Gulu confesses her desire for an intelligent life partner, but he tells her that considering the amount of dowry he can give, they can't get an intelligent and rich husband for her. She then drops him off at the court, she humorously quips about her quest for a perfect Mr. Universe as a life partner, her laughter masking the underlying yearning for her father's approval. With a wistful smile, Abdul bid her farewell, a heavy silence lingering in his heart. As he gets to work, the daily grind awaits him, but it isn't long before he encounters a moral crossroads. A man, shrouded in a cloud of questionable intent, extends a tempting bribe, hoping to secure some illicit assistance. But being an honest clerk, he declines the offer. Later in the day, he makes a bet with his colleague about a dowry harassment case, that the woman, rat her ready, will get justice, and eventually he wins the bet. His colleague comments that Abdul should have been a lawyer, he is just wasting himself with this job. Meanwhile, in a different part of the city, Gulu is at work, a shoe shop nestled within the bustling mall. Her frustration simmers as she observes a parade of seemingly oblivious customers who flit in and out without buying anything. While rearranging the shoes, her eyes catch the sight of a handsome man, sitting in the coffee shop across from her. A sigh of admiration escapes her lips, and she confesses to her friend that she has been secretly captivated by his allure for an entire month, though he appears oblivious to her existence. Right when she is busy ranting about her life, her friend nudges her, drawing her attention to an unexpected turn of fate. Looking up, she finds the man from the coffee shop coming her way. With a charming smile, he introduces himself as Amjad, setting her heart beating wildly with the melodious cadence of his American accent. She is totally smitten, and when he says that he has been observing her for a month, her heart skips a beat. Their connection deepens as she helps him find the perfect pair of shoes for his mother. He shares more about himself, and that he works for an American company. She is surprised when he informs her that he will be moving to the States in three months, since he got admitted to a university in Kalamazoo. Later that night she googles Kalamazoo, devouring every tidbit of information she can find. Next day when they meet, she repeats all the facts and figures. Impressed by her vast knowledge, he compliments her. Turns out she always wanted to study shoe design in America, but got stuck as a shoe sales girl. In a moment of profound connection, Amjad offers not only his admiration, but a lifeline to her dreams. He suggests she accompany him, envisioning a future where she would become a renowned shoe designer while he skillfully handles her marketing. As days turn into weeks, their hearts intertwine and they both begin to fall for each other. One day, Amjad, in a candid revelation, discloses his strict vegetarianism, but she says that she can't live without her meat. But love interferes, making him say that no one is stopping her from doing what her heart desires. In that moment, love's alchemy works its magic, forging an unbreakable bond between them. Later, Gulu and her father attend her best friend Pooja's wedding ceremony. Pooja's dad tells Abdul that in addition to the dowry, he gave 10 million in cash to her in-laws. Amidst the revelry and the swirl of colors at the wedding, Gulu's eyes catch a glimpse of a familiar face in the crowd, Amjad. With unbridled excitement, she rushes towards him. He confesses that he missed her, so he came to see her. While sitting in the car, he proposes to her, and with a huge smile plastered on her face, she agrees. Amjad finally brings his family to meet Abdul and Gulu. Initially, the encounter holds the promise of warmth and acceptance, as they refuse to accept any dowry. But things start to go downhill the moment he asks Abdul to support Amjad in his pursuit of the American dream. Turns out they want 8 million rupees from them. 
Goluzai are flares, and she confronts them, accusing Amjad of failing to communicate this crucial aspect of his family's expectations. When Amjad says nothing to his parents, she gets up, throws juice on his face, and asks them to leave. As the night descends, in a fit of fury, she removes the posters of America from her walls and screams in agony. While going through her laptop, she sees the clips of the Radha Reddy Dowry case, the woman saying that her husband has been jailed, and she has won 10 million rupees. As her voice resonates, something clicks inside Gulu, and she puts the poster of the Statue of Liberty back on the wall. The sun rises on a new day, Gulu takes her father to his favorite restaurant and says that she doesn't want to get married. Instead, she envisions a shared future where they spread their wings and embark on a journey to New York City. In this vision, she would carve a path to success as a renowned shoe designer, while her father would revel in a life of leisure. He laughs and inquires whether she intends to rob a bank to finance their dreams. But she laughs and tells him her real plan, that they will change their names and find a suitable and greedy match from any matrimonial site. She'll then do a fake marriage, and then the very next day, they will file a dowry harassment case against the family. Since the groom can go to prison for dowry harassment, they will do an out-of-court settlement with the family, taking 8 million rupees from them, then they will fly out of the country. Beaming with pride at her amazing plan, Galu looks at her father patiently. However, his initial reaction is not one of amusement, but anger. Sternly, he orders her to banish such thoughts from her mind, and abruptly exits the restaurant, leaving her alone with her grand ambitions. Next morning, as Abdul Kader's alarm clock beeps, he wakes up to find Gulu standing in front of him with a cup of tea in her hand. As he sits up, she starts explaining the details of her plan, from the first step to the very last. Despite her fervent explanations, her father remained unmoved, but she keeps persisting even on their way to work. Finally, she drops him at his work, but in anger, doesn't bid him farewell. However, the winds of fate are fickle, and as she is about to leave, Abdul is hit by a car, getting into a minor accident. She rushes to help him and brings him back home. The events of the day take an even more unexpected turn when Gulu's employment meets an untimely end, as her boss chooses to sever their professional relationship. Sitting down with her dad, she apologizes for her bad behavior, but fate has something else for her. Abdul, thinking that he could have lost his life in the accident today, agrees to help her fulfill her dream of going to New York. She hesitates at first, but then gives in, and they decide to go to Lucknow with their new identities, to trap their sacrifice. As the sun rises on the horizon and birds fly across the sky, Galu and Abdul reach Lucknow. They both get in the car to their destination, a fine and prestigious hotel. They book a king-size suite, with the names of Sania and Sherryar Habibala. Finally in their room, the air hums with a sense of purpose as they set to work finding suitable matches on websites and calling them for a meeting. On the first call, Abdul has a slip of tongue and introduces himself with his real name, and starts to panic. But Galu swiftly terminates the call, sparing her father the consequences of his slip of the tongue. After the first mistake, everything goes smoothly. After they are done with all the phone calls, Abdul expresses that he is hungry, but going through the menu, he finds it quite expensive. Finally, they decide to go to a restaurant with reasonable rates. Turns out that the restaurant, Haydari Kebabs, belonged to one of the men, Tariq, from the matrimony site. In the hustling bustling streets of Lucknow stands Haydari Kebab, a wonderful place for exquisite food. The place is packed with guests, and many wait in line, drawn by the allure of delectable dishes. There, Tariq can be seen, fully in his element, serving guests, and taking orders. While he serves some guests from Germany, his eye catches the sight of Galu and Abdul having dinner. Without hesitation, he hastens towards them, playfully addressing Abdul as his father-in-law, and insisting on paying their bill. But Golu, resolute in her mission, returns the money, asserting that his status as a prospective suitor remains unconfirmed, and no free meal can sway her judgment. The tension grows, and to settle who pays the bill, they decide on an arm wrestling match. She wins and leaves the establishment, declaring Tarek's interview for the following day cancelled. His response is a polite smile and a wave of farewell. The next day, a van stops in front of the hotel Gulu is staying in. Tariq, along with his parents, steps out of the car, his men carrying bags full of food and goodies with them. When they reach her room, they encounter a waiting area full of families waiting for their appointment. Tariq's men hand them boxes full of kebabs, and Tariq himself goes up to Gulu's room. She is taken aback by his presence and urges him to leave, but he hands his kebabs to Abdul, who begins eating immediately. Gulu tries calling security, but the irresistible aroma of the kebabs proved to be her undoing, and she devours it all. Gulu finally agrees to meet with Tariq's parents. In a warm and hospitable gesture, Tariq showcases his culinary prowess by serving them a mouth-watering array of dishes from his restaurant, a culinary symphony that leaves Gulu thoroughly impressed. The wedding discussion begins, Tariq's family unaware of the fact that a camera is recording them. 
Tarek's father, Mr. Haydari, starts stating all the things they need as dowry, from household items to jewelry, resulting in a total of 4 million rupees. With unwavering determination, Abdul, ever the shrewd negotiator, responds with his own terms, saying that the wedding must take place in a mere two days, devoid of elaborate celebrations, within the confines of the very room they sit in. Mrs. Haydari tries to object, but Mr. Haydari agrees. Right when the wedding time is being decided, Tarek speaks up, saying that he agrees with all the terms, but he needs at least three days with Gulu so that they can get to know each other before getting married. Gulu, resolute and unwilling to compromise, firmly declines this condition. As a consequence, Tarek and his parents make a graceful exit, leaving the fate of their union in limbo. Later at night, Gulu and Abdul, dressed in disguise, venture into the city, verifying the profile of each and every candidate they interview today. While on this spree, they come to know that Tarek belongs to a well-established family, having a bungalow of his own, along with an impressive fleet of three cars. Finally, they come to the conclusion that they have found their target, the individual they seek to ensnare in their web of deceit. On the other hand, at Tarek's place, his parents scold him for putting up such an absurd condition. Yet Tarek remains resolute, steadfast in his belief that if even a spark of attraction existed between them, Gulu would ultimately agree. Leaving his familial scene behind, Tarek then gets to his restaurant, and every single person asks him if she said yes or not. He is confident in himself and starts singing, his voice carrying the hope and conviction of his heart's desire. While singing, he finally sees what he has been waiting for, Gulu, in all her glory, walking towards him. With jubilation, he welcomes her. When she finally agrees to his condition, the whole restaurant bursts out in excitement, dancing and singing in joy, marking the beginning of a new chapter in the lives of Golu and Tarek. The next day, Tarek along with his cousin Farida, comes to pick up Golu from her hotel. But he is shocked to find out that Abdul will also be accompanying his daughter. But for the sake of Golu, he doesn't complain. Abdul and Golu, in a carefully coordinated strategy, play their roles with precision. Abdul adopts a negative stance, while Gulu exudes positivity, readily agreeing with every proposition that flows from Tarek's lips. She drives the car, while Tarek navigates across the city. After watching a movie, they go on a stroll, discussing about the beauty of the heroine. At this moment, he inquires about the significance of appearance to Gulu, but she smiles and declares that it's the inner beauty which matters to her the most. Even when he confesses that the educational qualifications he presented on the matrimonial site are inaccurate, Gulu's gracious acceptance only endears her further to him. The fact that his future wife does not care about material things makes Tarek fall in love with her. The rest of the day is a blur, spent roaming around the city, enjoying each other's presence. The next day is Holi, a cultural Indian festival of colors that unites people in joyous revelry. Tarek brings Abdul and Gulu to his place to play Holi with them. They enjoy themselves and dance to the melody of love. On their third day together, Tarek drives her to the restaurant, but she is shocked at seeing so many kids there. Turns out all of these are orphans, and they visit Hidari Kebab every now and then for free food. Golu's heart warms at this selfless gesture, her smile a testament to the compassion she is witnessing. In the kitchen, he leans in to kiss her, but she requests him to stop. He says that the reason he wanted three days with her was so that she falls in love with him, and their marriage would be on the basis of love. Golu, touched by his sincerity, declares her readiness to marry him. He then drives her to his house, and inside his room, he starts closing the doors. She begins to panic, but he says that he wants to marry her for love, not for money. She stands there in shock when he confesses that he doesn't want any dowry. He takes out money from his cupboard and starts packing it in a bag. Seeing her confusion, he elaborates that he is giving her 4 million rupees, so that her father can give it back to his parents. In this way, his parents would be happy with the illusion of receiving a dowry, sparing her father from the financial burden. As the scene unfolds in front of her eyes, something changes in her heart. She sits down next to Tarek, and for a moment, thinks about telling him the real truth about herself, that she is not Sania Habibola, but thinking about his reaction, and the fear of her father being arrested, overpowers her, and she decides against it. Tarek kisses her on the forehead, and requests that his parents should not know that he gave them the money. Tarek drops her off at the hotel, and with the money-filled bag, she enters her room. With every step, she feels as though a thousand eyes are trained on her, a conspicuous feeling that she can't shake. Seeing this much money, Abdul concludes that Tarek has completely fallen in love with her, and it is better that they tell him the truth. However, the paralyzing fear of being exposed, and the consequences it might entail, keeps her bound to their intricate scheme. The long-awaited wedding day finally arrives. Tarek and his parents arrive at the king's suite, and Farida takes their photos. Awestruck by Gulu's beauty as she enters with Abdul, Tarek's heart skips a beat. Abdul hands over the bag filled with 300,000 dirhams, and announces that he has booked the honeymoon suite for the couple. The wedding ceremony begins, and they finally tie the knot. Tarek is entirely unaware of the fact that all of these vows are fake. The couple gets to their room, and Tarek questions why they gave dirhams, instead of the money he gave her. She replies that they did it to make sure that his parents are not suspicious of anything. She feeds him kheer, and just because he is totally in love, he eats it, not knowing that it is d***ed. 
As he leans in to kiss her, she sneezes, pretending to be allergic to the roses which adorn their room. But fate is on her side, and she doesn't have to pretend anymore, as the kicks in, and he falls to the bed unconscious. Late at night, Golu and her father leave the hotel, and an unconscious Tariq. She stops in front of him, her conflicted emotions visible, but her father urges her to hasten their departure. Tariq is woken up from his slumber by the doorbell, and he goes to open the door and finds a police officer waiting for him. The officer informs him that his wife has filed a suit against him and his parents. In a desperate bid for assistance, Tariq calls his lawyer friend, and together they watch the damning video evidence of his family's demands for dowry from Golu, and her father. The officer tells them that he supports the girl and her family completely, and if they want to settle this out of the court, then they should give the girl 4 million rupees, otherwise they will be dragged into the court. The officer leaves, but Tariq keeps standing beside the window, feeling betrayed. His friend advises them all to give him the money and step aside unscathed. But Tariq, the sting of betrayal burning, snaps that he would never give money to these cheaters. At this moment, he decides that he is going to get revenge for this betrayal. Later, Tariq's friend heads over to the meeting place with a conspicuous pink bag full of money. As he leaves the bag at the decided spot, Galu comes out of shadows, cloaked in an abaya, and grabs the bag. When she starts to leave, Tariq and his men, dressed in abayas, surround her. She runs with the bag for her life and gets in a rickshaw, leaving Tariq behind. On the train journey back home, Abdul carefully packs all the money and hides it underneath the berth. Golu on the other hand, comments that after having delicious food made by Tariq, every other thing seems tasteless. She then expresses her enjoyment of their time in Lucknow, but her father issues a stern warning, cautioning her not to dwell on this place and to focus on her future life in America. Back at Haydari House, Tariq's friend delivers a startling revelation about their fake identities, and that out of the 300,000 they gave, only 100 Durham are genuine, the rest being fake. He then goes to the roof and finds Tariq cutting vegetables with a butcher's knife. While they are talking, Feridur rushes up to him, saying that she has found his wife, Gulra's Kadir. She shows her Gulu's Facebook account, revealing that Gulu wasn't smart enough to delete it. Meanwhile, Gulu meets with a dealer and discusses that she wants to convert her black money into white. While dealing with the man, Tariq floods her memories, but she has made up her mind, and nothing can change it. Tariq, driven by an unwavering determination to locate Gulu, takes out prints of her picture and boards a flight to Hyderabad. He plans to visit every single mall, and find the shop she used to work in. He, along with his friend, spends their time looking for her, while she patiently waits in line for the immigration office. As she waits, the memory of Tariq never leaves her, taunting her for betraying his love and faith. Something snaps inside her, and she rushes out. She tells her father that she will go back to Lucknow, and will return Tariq his money, because she can't betray him and her feelings towards him. Her father, bewildered, dismisses her decision as irrational, but she is determined, because she can't live her dreams at the cost of hurting Tariq. They finally drive back home, satisfied with the decision they've made. Tariq is having lunch at a food court when he spots some salesgirls wearing the exact same uniform as Gulu's. He approaches one of them, fabricating a story about wanting to deliver a voucher to Gulu. The salesgirl, believing his tale, provides him with Gulu's contact number and address. Back at her home, Gulu is packing up to leave for Lucknow when her father scolds her for making him do all sorts of felonies, and then end up giving up on her dreams. She smiles and explains her intention to study fashion design in India, determined to succeed as a renowned shoe designer, so that America will come to her. Her father, recognizing her resolve, instructs her to pack his belongings as well, as he has decided to accompany her to Lucknow. When Tariq and his friend finally reach Gulu's residence, they find it locked from the outside. Neighbors inform them that both father and daughter departed for the station, leaving behind a sense of mystery and unfinished business. At the train station, they book two first-class tickets to Lucknow, and finally board the train. Within the confines of their compartment, Gulu conceals the bag, but her plans are interrupted when the dealer appears demanding his money. She asks about the check he got, but he gets angry about the fact that it is not child's play to deposit, and withdraw the money. He once again asks about the money, and she says that her father has it. Once out of the train, she runs for her life, the dealer and his men after her. Tariq spots her from the side, and begins running after her. He asks the dealer why he is running after her, if Gulu had also deceived the dealer in their counterfeit marriage scheme. They both finally catch up to her, but when the dealer points the gun at her, Tariq beats him, getting into a fight with him and his men. Police arrive at the train station, and the dealer, along with his men, run for their lives. After they leave, she hands over the bag to Tariq and orders him not to label her as a cheater anymore. She rants about always finding men who never valued her for who she is, and the one time she decides to get a payback, she bumps into Tariq, who was the first man to value her. She confesses her feelings for Tariq, explaining that she couldn't bring herself to leave for America, fearing she had caused him pain. Right at this moment, Tariq's friend arrives with Abdul captured in his arms. She defends her father, accepting that she was the one who did all the planning. 
The police finally arrive, and Tarek's friend tells them that Galu and her father are criminals, and she accepts all her wrongdoings. Right when the police are about to capture her, Tarek intervenes, requesting that they leave. Galu confesses her love, and reveals that every second after she came from Lucknow had been spent remembering him, his talks and his food. Touched by her sincerity, he finally forgives her, saying that she caused him a lot of pain, but he wants to love and cherish him forever. With tears of happiness brimming in her eyes, she leans in and hugs Tarek tightly. The movie ends with Golu and Tarek finally getting married in the presence of their loved ones. But this is only the start of their happily ever after, and with Tarek's unwavering and constant support, Golu establishes her own shoe brand, aptly named Golu.